管此国同时驱逐黎大石，内外交控的黎巴嫩还能坚持多久 ？It's a delicate political balance in Lebanon. It's always pressure internal and external. 地区外交风波几近重演，黎巴嫩能否独立掌握自己的命运 ？I will not reach any conclusion with you, so I will not answer you anymore in this regard. 风云对话专访黎巴嫩驻华大使米利亚贾布尔，时任沙特阿拉伯驻华大使土耳其艾勒马迪。中东特辑正在播出。二零二一年十月二十九日至三十日，沙特、巴林、科威特、阿联酋四国先后宣布召回驻黎巴嫩大使，并要求黎大使限期离境。黎巴嫩外交部长紧急取消了前往英国参加联合国气候变化大会的行程，并召开黎政府紧急会议。有消息称，沙特甚至考虑与黎巴嫩断交。而在黎巴嫩国内，其首都贝鲁特于十月十四日爆发了严重武装冲突。六人死亡，三十人受伤。此次冲突原本是要求罢免负责调查去年贝鲁特港口爆炸事件首席法官的一场示威游行，但最终事态升级，发展成枪战。这也是贝鲁特在过去十三年里最严重的一场武装冲突。在二零二零年八月贝鲁特港口大爆炸之后，风云对话节目组曾第一时间走进黎巴嫩驻华大使馆，独家专访黎巴嫩驻华大使迪利亚·贾布尔。Good afternoon, Ambassador Jabber. Thank you for having us in your residence. Thank you for hosting me. It's an honor to be on your show. Well, you see, the whole world's sympathy went to Beirut after this abhorrent blast. It was a real catastrophe. Uh, a huge blast ravaged uh, the port of Beirut, and with it, it took like uh, uh, half of our capital, uh, Beirut. Lots of destruction, many. Human losses, around 200 uh, lives, around 6,000 injured. Many are still missing under the rubble. We are still searching for their corpse. Also, around 300,000 people left homeless. So you can imagine the scope of the devastation and how yeah. people are feeling. That's why our hearts are with the Lebanon and the Lebanese people. Thank you very much. We were really overwhelmed first by the Chinese sympathy. Uh, from uh, top to bottom, I mean, uh, from the leadership until uh, you know the common ordinary、uh, Chinese citizen who showed、uh, their respect, did、uh, their best to tell us that they support us and they are really by our side. So we are really very thankful for China and for Chinese,、uh, in fact. As for the international community, as you know,、uh, they rushed to help us. From then, we have visitors, international visitors, officials coming from around the world, first to show their solidarity, to pay.、Uh, I think one of the most famous is the French president. Yes, of course,、uh, he was the first actually to arrive. You know, with France, we have a very intimate and、uh, close relationship. We are francophonic country. We, my second language, for example, as many my Lebanese compatriots speak French. It's Practically the only country,、uh, the francophonic country in the Middle East. I'm not talking about the Maghreb region. I'm talking about the Mashrek. The first francophonic university established in the Middle East was in Beirut, and it's still working. I、uh, I graduated from it. 对爆炸原因的调查指向了政府部门的失职。两千多吨爆炸物被扣港口长达六年，官方机构连续多次收到关于潜在事故的警告，却无动于衷。总统称，事故发生三周前才收到港口有危险品的通知，并将责任推诿给上一届政府。一直以来，黎巴嫩的政治腐败问题饱受国际社会诟病。据联合国开发计划署估计，黎巴嫩每年因腐败导致的直接损失高达五十亿美元。So, what do you think are the real problems of the political system? Lebanon is, I mean, it had its golden age in last century, and、uh, Beirut used to be one of the most charming cities in、yeah. Middle East. It still is, <laughs> still is, yeah. Still is. But、When、how come it cannot it fail to achieve what people have、uh, expected? You know, if you listen now to the speeches of 
many politicians in Lebanon, you would hear many of them complaining about corruption, about this illness that is really eating inside the administration. So it's something that everybody complain about. The problem, you know, Shautian, corruption is in every society. Mm -hmm. uh, you hear every day scandals here and there. The problem is accountability. And this is our main issue now, is that everybody knows that we have corrupt, mm -hmm. but we have to hold them accountable. And this is now, after what happened, everybody is keen uh, to make. You have to take into consideration that we are a country coming out of a war. We to maintain some internal stability because after the war, uh, everybody swore that we won't get another war that the war is so destructive that we can do whatever possible to avoid any other war. And for that, some warlords were incorporated into the state. And those, the mentality of the war continued, but in different terms. And this is what we are keen in, you know, finding a way to finish with. And people, as long as they were living their lives normally, they didn't pay many attention to that. But since the economic problems started, people were paying attention to see where that money uh, went to, where it did disappear, why my country has so many financial problems. Back to the uh, domestic economy of uh, Lebanon, probably it's uh, not been the perfect shape in recent years. And now, given the blasts alone, it's going to wipe off like up to a quarter of the GDP. Mm. So how is the country going to cope with much, this yes. uh, challenge? Well, at the optimistic part of me would tell you that we used to cope with uh, every kind of challenges. But to tell you the truth, yes, people are suffering. It is uh, right before the blast. The blast now is going to accentuate a bit the situation. As I told you, we have our uh, financial problem, we have our economic problem, and you have to take into consideration at the same time. We have first to tackle this corruption thing, mm -hmm. hold accountable, see how the country has lost lots of money during so short period of time. At the same time, we are bearing huge responsibilities uh, from the Syrian crisis. Uh, as you know, Lebanon is one of the countries that host per capita the highest number of refugees per population, the highest in the world. Mm. So we are a small country, a small population, with already um, uh, an economic, uh, lots of economical problems. And then come the Syrian crisis. Um, we received generously one million and a half mm. um, Syrian refugees. We already have received around half uh, million Palestinian refugees mm -hmm. and Lebanese population is around four, four million. It's half of our, our population is already foreign population. So it's putting huge pressure on our economy and international community. They rushed now to help us, but they know that we have received so generously those people who would in principle have gone to Europe, America, Latin America or whatever.黎巴嫩此番于海湾国家争端的直接导火索是黎巴嫩新闻部长乔治·库尔达西涉言门战争言论，其在今年八月份接受采访时将也门战争描述为沙特阿拉伯和阿拉伯联合酋长国发动的
some may say that the Lebanon, as a matter of fact, is the victim of the past colonialism and ongoing imperialism. Do you agree with the saying? We are a strategic country. We are in the middle, in the heart of the Middle East. And you know from long time the Middle East is a place where many international actors play. So lots of uh, pressure being uh, exerted on, on the countries there. You can see, if you look at the Middle East, look at Syria, look at Iraq, look at Libya, look at Yemen, they are all having big troubles. This is also what we wanted to avoid, is that, you know, it's easy. It's very easy to go into another war. But we, we manage, you know, it's a delicate political balance in Lebanon. And we don't want to see anybody excluded from the political game. So including everybody in the political game, internal political game, can bring with it sometimes some troubles. Mm. So it's like an equilibrium. You have to find a way to please everybody. At the same time, you have the pressure of international actors that have some plans for this region and with which you do not agree all the time. So it's, it's always pressure, internal and external. This is how uh, and this is why we don't want our country to implode because of that. Well, Lebanon is uh, probably the only country that will have to design the power share in the government based on the beliefs. And some people may argue that uh, if it's really up to date, so maybe as you said, we also brought in a lot of problems. Well, what's the general feeling from the public? Lebanon is uh, really an, uh, in its component something very rich for the Middle East because what we are saying, what the message we want to forward to the Middle East and for the whole world is that we are different. We know that we are different, but we want to live together. We want to find a way to live together. We fought a war. It didn't help us much. So we don't want to fight another war and we want to find space for each one to feel Lebanon as is final home and to feel as if we are Lebanese and not any more Christians, uh, Muslims or whatever. This is the idea. This is why our political system needs some adjustment, mm -hmm. probably still giving some insurances to mm -hmm. in, in a way, but at the same time, getting rid of being feeling first as a Christian and as a Muslim, feeling first as a Lebanese. And this, our political system, yes, has to do some adjustments. Lebanon is a beautiful country and it's uh, well renowned for its uh, cultural diversity as well. But it's also a place of uh, sensitivity, of conflict. How do you manage to coexist with all these uh, peace and friendships? And also, um, how do you manage to be as secular as uh, it is? We managed to have normal life that put aside complex uh, religious uh, beliefs. People live their lives normally. You can fast for Ramadan. At the same time, you cannot fast for Ramadan in, in Lebanon. It's not that you are obliged to. It's an open society. It's, um, uh, you can do whatever you want. There is no obligations as long as you, know, um, you respect the other.沙特阿拉伯阿拉伯半岛上的明珠 2020年9月,艾勒馬迪邀請小田走進了搭建在大使官邸花園的帳篷,在這裡開始了風雲對話。
So you have been in China for four years, and if you were to describe China in three words, so what would they be? So lovely country. <laughs> three words already. Cut. Can you make the question again? So you've been in China for four years already. Mm -hmm. How would you summarize your experience here in China? I think China is a wonderful country, and I cannot repeat. I enjoyed the company, I enjoyed the lifestyle uh, in China. So China is a very important country, and uh, I'm enjoying me and my family to be uh, in China. You enjoy the lifestyle in China. Of course. How's it different uh, from a lifestyle somewhere else, maybe? No, it is uh, it's a very advanced lifestyle, totally different in some aspects, but uh, suit me uh, personally and my life. Um, so uh, at uh, all levels, education level, social level, even uh, health sector, appropriate for any diplomat to be in China and must any diplomat to be proud to work in China. Shatter的泰明石油储量仅次于委内瑞拉,产油量仅次于美国,而石油出口量常年居世界第一,在世界能源市场上举足轻重。同时,石油出口也是沙特的经济支柱。仅这一项就占到该国年出口额的七成,是沙特GDP总量的四分之一。但在疫情期间,国际油价持续暴跌,沙特经济也因此受到影响。去年三月,由于沙特和俄罗斯无法就石油减产达成一致,国际原油价格
there and there, there's so senator the way, said there, there's, there's senator said that we are protecting your industry and you are destroying ours there's no troops in saudi arabia sorry okay. there's no american troops in saudi arabia well that's what they call american no, troops and military um, assistance uh, or experts, but there is no troops. This is one you have okay. to understand. Military personnel. So then Mr. Trump, hmm, he advised Saudi Arabia and Russia to do reach such uh, agreement. Well, analysis say that the reason why there was a price war, anyway, that's how it's called in media, right, is because, well, both Russia and Saudi believed that the oversupply of oil would eventually hit the shale oil industry more than anything else. You know what you have in mind. This is uh, the theory of conspiracy that doesn't work in this field. What is your assessment for the developments of the oil industry? And okay. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not an oil man, mm -hmm. but I have to explain for you because I noticed that some reports say mm -hmm. that the oil production to China dropped 23%. Mm -hmm. In fact, I want to report to you that in fact, it's increased 12% compared of last year. Really? That yeah. really is uh, on the contrary to what I read. And I actually, this is an uh, information for you. Mm. You mean in percentage of uh, what yes. China... Compared of last year. Mm, in percentage of what China imports. Import. Mm. But in, uh, when it comes to the absolute volume, it dropped by 23.5%. I cannot give you a specific answer in this regard, but so far I know we increased our production to China by 12%. Okay. If you go to volumes, hmm, you have to go control the numbers, but we increased. Because there is very much, it says an important factor that China recovery is very uh, quick and healthy. That is also good for us as a partners. Do you have the confidence that you will be able to retrieve all the market shares as before, mm -hmm. as soon as the oil production goes back to the normal standard? The yes. So you are? Yes. But yes. after what you have gone through during this pandemic, how important you find that the diversity of the economy? We are diversity of the economy is an important one of the main objects of uh, 2030 vision. And the uh, dividends of oil is one of our also main objects. Mm -hmm. So we are working with that. Still, we have 10 years. We'll see the results by 2030. Mm. But we are always working with China as a strategic partner. Mm. And uh, uh, China is uh, a good partner, and we are working in the same and the right direction to uh, improve this vision. Mm. Taking into account, China has a road and a built uh, yeah. initiative, and we have two. 2030, and we met both of them. And so we have uh, many, many, many positive perspectives in the future. When you mentioned about the uh, Vision 2030, that you have laid the nuclear plants in, the, in this blueprint, and uh, this uh, raises some concerns in the neighboring countries. So what do you have to say on this? We have peaceful uh, mm -hmm. nuclear system. It has been uh, ambitious also. It has been announced by high ranks, and we are working with that in cooperation with friendly countries, including the United States and others. Okay, I'll put it another way. So, Saudi decided to develop the nuclear energy. Yeah. And uh, you guarantee that it's going to just stay in the civilian use? Of course. And how do you understand that there are countries who raise their concerns we over have, this decision? We have international commitments and we respect our commitments. Okay, can you please tell us about the, the letter that some countries send, write the letter to praise China's the human rights uh, construction? We support China in the field of human rights, not from today, from 1996 we are together with China and from 2000 we were member of Human Rights Commission, we supported no action motions against China that adopted by China and always supported China. 
and we still supporting China because we believe in the principle of non-intervention mm -hmm. in other. China has its own affairs, its own uh, territory, and no one has the right to interfere. And China believes in that and that principle to, uh, so far. 二零零二年三月二十八日，第十四次阿盟首脑会议在黎巴嫩首都贝鲁特举行。会议一致通过了以沙特提议为基础的阿拉伯和平倡议，要求以色列遵守联合国有关决议，全面撤出一九六七年以来占领的所有阿拉伯领土，接受巴勒斯坦建国，并公正解决巴勒斯坦难民问题。在此基础上，阿拉伯国家将同以色列签署和平协议。并在实现全面和平的前提下，逐步与以色列建立正常关系。然而，这一问题至今未能得到妥善解决。在今年九月召开的联合国大会上，巴勒斯坦国总统阿巴斯仍在呼吁召开一次国际和平会议，要求以色列必须在一年之内从约旦河西岸、加沙地带和东耶路撒冷撤出。So you see, President Trump said that he would welcome Saudi to normalize ties with uh, Israel. I welcome you... Mr. Trump, but I cannot com comment about his... Uh, but you are not invited to my question is, is normalizing the relationship with Israel something that Saudi is currently considering? Saudi is its position. I will make it clear for you. Uh, if Israel adopt Saudi Arabia tabled in 2002 peace plan, initiative of peace plan. If in 2002, mm, signed by all Arab countries, if Israel at that stage accept the initiative, then we will talk later on about no normalization. Before that, nothing. But you see in 2018, the Crown Prince said at the time that the peace plan between uh, Israel and uh, Palestine will have to move forward, otherwise, Palestine will have to see other Arab countries normalizing the ties with Israel. We support an agreement, palestinian israeli agreement. And this is very important to go forward. Without no agreement between the two parties, and nobody go forward to steps unless uh, uh, our Israeli adopt the Arab initiative. Plan of peace. Then what is Saudi's stance on uh, a UAE's move in uh, establishing we the have, uh, diplomatic is, ties? I will make it shortly. The United Arab Emirates is an ally, a friendly country, is our neighbor, a sovereign country, and that decision is their decision. No one has right to intervene on this. And you don't judge? Never. So in this matter, you are not with Palestine condemning this? I think some Arabs already has relationship with Israel. Jordan so, and Egypt? And more. More? Mm. Which? Uh, in, in different forms. So w w I will not reach any conclusion with you. So I will not answer you anymore in this regard. OK. <laughs> if you were to describe China in three words, so what would they be? So lovely country. <laughs> three words already? Yeah. You said three words. You mean three words? Uh, literally, <laughs> or you mean? Cut. <laughs> <laughs>